Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode three of The Expanse. I'm really excited to get into this episode. I've actually been quite surprised by how quickly I'm getting into The Expanse. A lot happens in the edit, so I'm enjoying the reaction, but then when I'm going through an editing, I'm pretty much re-watching that episode about three or four times. And, and during that, it's like you really get to appreciate the show at a, at a deeper level because it's it's quite hard to catch everything that everyone is saying, especially if there's like an action scene going on. My entire view on an episode can change once I've edited it and, and appreciated it at another level. Yeah, during the edit of the second episode, I realised I was already excited for the next one. That's a, that's about as good as a sign gets when I'm watching a programme. We left on quite a cliffhanger. Our beloved team on the night have basically, just as they're running out of air, they're finding a ship that reads their distress call, but bad news bears, it turns out it's Mars. And it end, the show actually ended with, with the crew of the Martian craft kind of you know, just coming into the ship basically in quite a dramatic fashion and we're thinking so I don't know if it's going to kick off I don't know if there's going to be a fight I don't know if they're going to make friends but I can't, I ha it feels like we're on the inexorable path to war at the moment it, everything has that feel about it like everyone's interpretations of everyone else's behaviour in terms of Mars, Earth and the Belt is the worst, least generous interpretation Everything feels tense. There's no trust. It's really clear this thing is only going to take a spark to ignite, just like they warned us in the opening episode. And um, I think the Canterbury is, is going to be that spark. I think there were also some really standout performances in the last episode, like Naomi, fantastic. Miller, who I hadn't really been liking. I'm actually really far more enjoying his storyline i'm interested to see his relationship with um i believe the woman's name is octavia the the woman from the bar i don't know if they're people who are both broken who could love each other in the future or if they're people who still love each other but maybe were together in the past and don't really know how to be around each other right now with all these feelings and no relationship basically there's a tension between them and a sadness and an intimacy that i'm really curious to find out about i still don't know his name this is awful but but miller's partner last episode i every scene with him i absolutely loved you know the the cactus taking the cactus back to that um girl from the belt who we saw um, they'd gone to see because I think someone had been killed there, murdered in the first episode. And just the way that he responded to that pretty racist um, guy that worked for the governor, you know, with the grass. Um, and he's an earther, so I'm starting to understand, you know, okay, right, there's earthers and there's belters, and earthers are considered superior to belters. And so I like that he used, he didn't just nod along like a polite dog and he actually made that point. You know, maybe if these people had a view like this, they would be a little bit more invested in the future of things. We got introduced a little more to Burton, who's Amos Burton, who... Uh, I couldn't quite work out what that conversation was. was a, it seems like he's... He maybe doesn't have a natural moral code. And he relies on Naomi, he trusts her to let him know what's right. And he was really open about that. And I kind of like him. I, I thought, I like the way that he respects Naomi and I, I like Naomi. So I'm probably going to end up team Naomi. But I like that. Jim Holden is still mostly getting on my nerves at the, at the moment. Just because he's had to turn the light on there it's suddenly getting a bit dimpsy what i was trying to say was that you don't endanger everyone your team all of the possible people that could be impacted by your mission because you've got some strong feelings i find that really frustrating 
and he's just been impulsive and and he he did accept even in in an interim the position of xo so he's also got a responsibility to his team to to keep them safe and he's proving himself an awful leader well not not even an awful leader he's proven himself not a leader he's had a couple of good moments he got there in the end with garvey but overall in the episode he seemed lost and overwhelmed and i don't blame him for feeling those things but you don't get to you know do that in a leadership position but thankfully naomi was on hand to provide some sanity and leadership when when we really needed it and i'm really interested to see how that relationship develops or doesn't can they come together i hope so i hope that jim develops over time as i have no doubt that he will and goodness knows what's going to become of naomi because she's already pretty much on point meanwhile back on earth we have the continued interrogation of um i cannot remember the guy's name now it was like henky bobong or something <laughs> we had um is it sadavir erin wright who's from Thurman from Fargo. There's the politics happening between Erin Wright and Avazarala. I didn't really catch this line on the on the first watch, but he was saying to her, you know, I have to basically work my tits off, grease palms, you know, climb the greasy pole, all, all of these kind of stuff. And I'm kind of pissed off about that. And Avazarala was like, and that's my problem because. And then he said to her, you know, you're like a heartbeat from like rule of the world basically you no know, rule of reverse basically and you don't have anyone to answer to so what's her role i think i need to go back and have a look again and see see what her role is because i'm still unclear i mean does that imply maybe that she's like a, not an elected role so therefore she doesn't have to do all of the the moving and shaking that erin wright has to do i find that really interesting i'd like to see that develop I'm gonna love the politics aspect of this show. I can see already it's got me, it's got my brain churning. And of course, we're still looking for Julie Mao, and it could be Julie Mao that brings our sort of three separate plot lines together, because the um, Canterbury answered the Scopuli's distress signal. Miller is looking for Julie Mao, who was on the Scopuli, and um, Avasarala is looking for why Mars is attempting to screw Earth over and maybe an alliance with the Belters. So that may well bring her um, into the fray on that stuff. And I'm all about that. So that's a fairly long intro. I won't keep you any longer. Let's have at it. My name is James Holden. Speaking for the five survivors of the Canterbury. Our ship was destroyed as a SOS mission. What did I say? Oh! Fucking hell. Oh, dang it! I am so mad right now! Well done. has confirmed that the freighter Canterbury was bound for Ceres Station with a warning that diverted course to answer a distress call from the Scopuli, a light freighter operating under a belt contract with Tycho Engineering. Tycho Engineering, okay. What the hell? Have fun. You're just giving her a break. Stay calm. Unte golden gone your good. Double tree, okay? Stay calm. Hands be. And when you talk in and before is weak. Stay calm. Unte golden gone your good to put you, okay? Better. Every time better. I'm a good teacher. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to go. Why don't you stay at the streets today, okay? Huh? It could get dangerous out there. Maybe you too. But... Oh, these two though!
Radicals are going to try to exploit the situation. You can't blame them. Mars practically declared war on the belt. Our sole concern is the safe and peaceful operation of this station. Mm. Star Helix nice will maintain order. OPA Rounder, fine by me. All right, mustache. These are your sector assignments, your team leaders. You bust any heads and I'll bust yours. Dismissed. Deeply inspiring. Hey, yes! Unless is your team leader, Miller, I don't want to hear it. She's the only one you listen to. Juliet Mao. That's not important right now. Oh, no, it's important now. The Scopuli is the ship that that holding guy got scooped up trying to save. Well, Julie Mao was on it. I checked the logs. All her shipmates were crewed up out of the same dock workers local right here on Ceres. I mean, OPA. Good riddance to them all. This was a favor. She's not on Ceres, so I'll run that up the line, and then Daddy Warbucks could bother some other station chief that he thinks he Come has. on! Close the case. Enjoy your tax free bonus. I do not like the privatization of the police force. Oh, this is the Martian ship. So how long ago did like Earth humans and Mars humans diverge? Well, I want to know that. This doesn't look friendly at all. If we're prisoners, we have the right to legal counsel. Hey, get up! Hey, come on, hey, go! Hey. Yes! Damn it! Put him down. Leave him off alone. He's coming with us. What name? What? Alex. Alex. Hey! Where are you taking him? <sighs> We're gonna die. No, I'm not having that. Don't get me all close to these characters in the first couple of episodes and then kill them all off, please. This is a security issue. The Secretary yeah. General has to make a strong response. Like what? Like redeploy the fleet. Which will only inflame the situation. We don't even know that the Martians are behind this. We have the word of some ice hauler named James Holden. He was a naval officer. You saw his service record. He has no reason to lie. Sirius is our station, the key to the belt. With those resources, Mars could finally cut the cord to Earth. If you want to war with Mars, this will get you one. 50 bucks says I can beat you to the end of the concourse. Bubbles. Frank. Bubbles? This is the bill. Call me Bubbles, darling. Everybody does. I always just let you win. Martians won't release any more intel, if they even have any. So for the moment, you're completely useless and therefore have no excuse not to come to my house this afternoon. In 40 years, you've never taken a no from me. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, you're the best at rolling over. <laughs> See you later. She's on a mission. Think about it. All they need is one false confession. And I wonder who'll crack first. Nice. Shut up. They're listening. No other reason to let us talk. Who the fuck is this? Yes. She's like Anna Lucia from Lost. Here we go. The fuck? What? Five fathers, three mothers? Me, yeah. Eight parents, one child. Yes, on a 22 acre farm in Montana. Hmm? North American trade zone, very expensive to maintain. You were a tax break? Why would you destroy the Canterbury? What? What are you talking about? What did you do with Alex? You were a problem in the Navy. Eight years ago, aboard the UNN Cheng Fei, you assaulted a superior officer. Not technically. He ducked my punch. I broke my hand on the bulkhead. You were dishonorably discharged. He ordered me to fire on a belter ship. He was a smuggler? Who was smuggling people. You had no way of knowing that at the time. But I was right. Earth and Mars. Been stepping on the necks of the belters out here for over a hundred years, and I didn't want to be the boot. How long have you known that Naomi Nagata was an OPA operative? 
What? Excuse me? Two advanced degrees in fusion drive design. You never wondered why someone of such obvious intelligence was wasting her life sealing cracks and fixing gauges on an ancient crumbling ice hull? I never asked. Based on the desperate condition of your shuttle, it clearly required extraordinary improvisational expertise for you and your crew members simply to survive, let alone restore your antenna array. These are the hallmark skill sets of terrorists. Oh, come on, that's a broad brush. Naomi's not OPA. I don't believe you. You do now. I don't even give a shit if she is at this point. I think the OPA seem to have a valid point. I'm looking for Anderson Dodds. I think he might be my friend. Kind of runs things around here, right? You might know about that. Mars is working with the OPA. We think they're making a move to take serious. The Secretary General is going to present the evidence tomorrow. Stealth ships are first strike weapons. That's just not possible. We'll have to redeploy our fleet to show strength. And that would make a bad situation worse. <sighs> the Martians wouldn't do that. Fucking hell. I mean, the Martians look like dickheads, but... I mean, all that fancy gear, the one thing they don't allow for is... Scratching your junk. Yeah, I get junk itch too sometimes. Uh, pretty bad, actually. What I, I, I recommend to my patients is Uvasol. It's an antifungal cream, and the best thing about it is if you put it under your tongue, it uh, helps to relax. He doesn't need ball cream shit, because he's got no balls. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Please don't kill my Naomi. Please don't kill my Naomi. Please don't kill my Naomi. It's just chilling. It's good to see her, I think. Wait! I flew with the Mars Navy for 20 years before I shipped off on the camp. <laughs> uh, so, so you're helping? Yeah, you see, I served. And I was honorably discharged. There's a hell of a lot more than I can say about you, cowboy. All right, calm down. Who stands to gain if Earth and Mars get into a throwdown? The OPA. How well do any of us really know Naomi? Oh. Uh, oh, shit. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. These men refuse to top off our water tanks. We'll die up there without it. So die. Mars killed the cats! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 back these guys up. You, you. Oh, Jesus. Give the Martians the water! We all don't know animals. You have every right to be angry. Easy on the clutch, eyes on the road, not too fast. Don't worry, I'll be gentle with you, Papa. But if we act like animals, it only justify their belief that we are. I love this guy. Anderson Dawes. Email. You crewed her up on a ship called the Scapuli. You know the one that Mars used to kill the Canterbury. How much are they paying you to find her? I'm not judging. I'm just curious to know what your rape is. Case I need you to sue up for a different side. What side would that be? An Earth Corp may pay your salary, but you were born here. You took a young, naive, rich girl, daddy issues, Stop. got inside her head. Stop. Now I'm getting choked up. Other than the money, what do you care? You didn't know her. Past tense. Nah, but you did. Hmm. You clearly did. I'll ask around for you. See if anybody know anything. <laughs> and thank you for preventing bloodshed earlier. Interesting. I like him. Don't care if he's a goodie or baddie. I'm gonna enjoy watching him. Ugh. Fuck off, Mars. 
I've been defending you and now you're... History is quite impressive. Dick. I don't like this guy at all. He's reminding me of uh, Commander Cushing in um, The Handmaid's Tale. You use us belters as slaves. How is the ice on Phoebe? How would I know? Phoebe's a research station off limits to belters. Oh. Why does he keep asking about Phoebe? Belt, 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 belt. Do you think I'm up here? I don't believe in causes and I will not be your scapegoat. Take that bitch. Ah, oh, shit. Here he goes with his psychic pill or whatever. Take it, enhances the senses and they can better read people. Look at that. Did she just flip him the bird? Who registered the call? Someone who survived? Jim. Was it you? Hands where I can see them. No! Oh. It fucking wasn't! He registered the call. <gasps> you and Holden are working together. Fuck. Oh, now it's a conspiracy. Burden is gonna kill you, my friend. Where's Naomi? What the hell is this? You join up? What did you guys tell them? To suck it. Everything. I told them everything. Anything they wanted to know, I told them. I, I, I think I even made some stuff up at the end. I can't remember. I just kept talking. <laughs> they told me <laughs> Naomi's OPA. Is that true? Oh. Who cares? They'll say anything Quite. to get in our heads. They told me that you faked your medical records and signed on to the can to get away from a drug dealer who wanted you dead. Well, that's true. She just saved all your asses. Are you OPA? Okay? Unbelievable. I'm coming I'm from you. Just answer the question, darling. I'm not your darling, and you're obviously one of them. Versus. So what was my big plan, huh? To sit on a shit bucket like the camp for five years while all of this got set up? Sleeper agents. <sighs> well, screw you! Guys, guys. Human shield, you ever heard of those? Here we go again. Call the guard. He'll take the first few bullets. Tell you what, I've gone off Alex fast. Late last night, our routine surveillance of Diplomatic Corps logged an urgent communique between Ambassador de Graff and his counterpart on Mars. Shortly thereafter, we picked up a spike in chatter between Mars what? High Command and nine MCRN facilities believed to manufacture stealth composites. She set him up! Nine. I thought we were only... She set him up! They were taking inventory. I leaked to de Graff that Mars was giving stealth tech to the OPA. He did what I thought he would. The spike in chatter was panic. They were calling to see if anything was missing. And since they had to ask, it means that they didn't give it to anyone. Which means that Mars isn't working with the OPA or trying to take control of Ceres. Smart. They didn't destroy the Canterbury. What did I say? And who did? Someone who's trying to start a war. That was brilliant. Masterfully done, Avasarala. Masterfully done. You will publicly recant your statement. You guarantee the safety of my people. And I'll say whatever you want. You will put out the fire you started by telling everyone, everywhere, that Mars is innocent. That the Canterbury was destroyed through the actions of Naomi Nagata. What? An operative of an OPA sleeper cell. No. Are you willing to make that statement? No. That can't be true. Don't do it, Jim. That even if Naomi is OPA, 
Without her, I'd be dead. She Did saved her. her own life, too. Bring up the bogey. Yes, sir. That's a drive plume of a ship decelerating hard toward us. We've been tracking it inbound ever since we picked up your distress call. It's not one of ours or Earth's, and it won't answer our hails. Oh, fuck. We suspect it was sent for Naomi Nagata. What do you think now? Well, you don't know anything. Go home! Oh, shit! What did I say? Really shut the bed on this one, Jim. Fucking hell. It's chaos. Chaos is a ladder. Tennessee, three finger, hold him. Never seen your father more proud. See, here's the thing. I was terrified for you. I didn't know why. And now I do. You will do anything to win. Just like your father. That's what got him killed. I won't play with you. Ever again. Oh, it made me want to cry. She burned that bridge. Wait. Isn't that the guy from Space Tinder? It is. Night Bandit. Stay calm, okay? I take all things when you get what you get. Come on, guys, it's over. Just let's go home. Miloda, be home. Don't nah. It's not over, Urta. It's just beginning. Shit. Hang on. We do this! Remember the cat. No! Oh, come on! Shit! I'm gutted. I still don't know his name. I'm gonna have to look it up because I. <sighs> okay, so I've looked up his name as Dimitri Havlock, which I swear to God I've heard, um, but it, it had not gone in. I'm just gonna call him Dimitri. Dimitri has been. I mean, it looks like he's been killed. I hope he hasn't. I'm hoping that there's some sort of. Um, they gotta do something. Oh, my sweet summer child. I really want to see where his character goes. I'm going to be really gutted if, if that's it for him. He's one of my favourites. So, <clears throat> that was such a crazy episode. That has been the episode that has most felt like Game of Thrones in space for me. I love the intrigue. I was really surprised by Avasarala's arc this episode. I don't know what I had her as, but she really surprised me because, I mean, it was a really cunning plan 
that, that she set into place. And it also was ruthless because she burned this guy. He was clearly maybe her father's friend or whatever, but he, you know, they've known each other since she was a little girl. And she was willing to effectively use him as bait to draw out the Martians. It's one of those things where you think, God, you know, maybe it's true that you do have to have a certain element of ruthlessness in you to lead at that level because she had to find out if she hadn't done that we'd probably already be at war with Mars It still feels wrong, and he's so hurt. I je I welled up. I had a lump in my throat when he was explaining the story of her doing anything to win a hand of cards. Yeah, he made his point very well. And, you know, he won't be playing with her again, so that's it. That bridge is well and truly ashes. <sighs> Meanwhile... Miller is not wanting to give up on the Julie Mao case, even though he's been told to, because he feels like there's clearly a link and he can't let it go, which is really interesting. So he's kind of acting more like an old fashioned earth detective, whereas actually he's in what is essentially a, a, a corporatized police force that are just... You know, they're not even enforcing the law, as we find out in the first episode. They're just mercenaries, really, mercenary police officers taking cases for bounties. We get introduced to this guy as Anderson Dawes. Oh, yes! Who I liked immediately because the actor is fantastic. He's been in The Crown. He's been in loads of other stuff. Really, really top, top draw actor. And he, his accent is just hilarious. I, I, I'm finding the Belter accents really funny. And he clearly knows who Julie Mao. So that's that's going to develop. And now the Medina is in chaos because of the the absence of water and because Jim fucking Holden triggered a near war because he couldn't wait a minute to get his facts right. I'm really pissed about that for some considerable time. So that's sort of the, the political intrigue that's going on. But the, the main kind of action at stake was, was happening between the crew of the night, or the crew of the Canterbury, who are now in the night, and the Martians. So they have some sort of drug that they take before they do an interrogation, which seems to kind of increase their mental acuity and allow them to pick up on micro expressions and just be like have almost superhuman focus so that they can detect um, deception. We find out Alex served 20 years in the Martian Navy. Never got a flicker of that when he was on the ship. He's not got his little beanie hat and everything on now. Now he's all in his little kit. I went off him immediately. Uh, immediately I swear to god his accent changed and everything he's just completely different character so I'm not happy about that Burton has just flown up in my estimations I already liked him a little bit now I really like him he played a blinder this episode but the Martians seem to immediately come to the conclusion that Naomi is is OPA and I'll just say this one, I don't think they had the evidence to be to be so sure of themselves, even if she later turns out to be a member of the OPA. No one produced a single shred of evidence other than she was overqualified for the role that she was in. Now, my, while that might be indicative, that is sure as hell not something I would hang my hat on as hard evidence. But they, I think the pressure on everybody is just sending everyone mad because you could see Jim was kind of, and at least entertaining the thought like oh shit I didn't even think of that and the Martian interrogators was perfectly aware of that and um Shed the medic guy 
he's an absolute coward. I still like him though, because at least he's honest with it. He wasn't trying to pretend. He was like, I told him everything. I'm, I'm pretty sure I even made some shit up. So I like that. Do I think Naomi is an OPA terrorist? I sort of hope she is, because I want to learn more about what the OPA is up to. And I, I'm kind of lightly sympathetic to their plight at the moment, even though I haven't really seen enough to make a proper opinion. But they feel like the underdog in this scenario to me. So I'm not immediately like, oh, they're a terrorist organisation, so they're the baddies. That's just not how I feel. So I wouldn't... It, if Naomi was OPA, just that fact would not, not necessarily turn me against her. But I don't know what what is going to come up. I, I genuinely don't. So that's quite fascinating. And Jim was at least loyal to Naomi. He didn't throw her under the bus. He wouldn't make the announcement to sort of recant his testimony that he's made to the entire fucking world by the looks of it. Which leaves Mars pissed off, but at least now Earth knows that Mars isn't behind it. So hopefully there can be some sort of back channel diplomacy happening that just calms everyone the fuck down. But that doesn't solve the media issue at hand, which is there is a ship heading towards the Martian um, naval ship that looks like it could be hostile. And we don't know what's going to come of it. So that's interesting. I absolutely loved every single last second of that episode. Apart from Dimitri getting done over at the end. That's upset me. I shall go hopefully right into the next episode so that I can find out that he's okay. Until the next time. Bye-bye.